Hello, hello. All right, I know, sorry, the lighting isn't the best in here, but work with what you got, you know? All right, we're going to do Genesis 47 today. So, Jacob and all of his descendants have moved into Egypt in the land of Goshen. Again, it's not like Egypt proper, I guess, is all it is, just like a province of theirs, because the Egyptians don't like to in mingle with the Hebrews, not the Hebrews specifically, well, yeah, it is kind of specifically the Hebrews, but also the shepherds. Shepherds, it's an abomination or unclean, you know, because they're working with animals and it's beneath them, caste system of society, stuff like that. But Pharaoh loves Joseph. Fer Joseph's making Pharaoh super wealthy while taking care of his land in the fam during the famine. Like, Pharaoh and Pharaoh's officials love Joseph. So, of course, they're like, yeah, you got to go, go over there and... Raise your cattle. We'll take care of you during the famine. All right, so starting King James Version, Genesis 47. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of the brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, <clears throat> Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our father. They said, Moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and thy brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest thy men of activity among them, then make them rulers o over my cattle. And Joseph brought in <clears throat> Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of... The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my father in the days of their pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. All right. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. So like I said, pretty simple to understand what's going on here. Pharaoh respects Joseph, likes Joseph, he's doing a lot of good things for him. So he says, give him the best of the land, because the land of Goshen, again, is still fertile for pasture and for raising flocks, even in the famine. So he gives him the best of the land of Goshen. And again, planting the seeds for why you can see a lot of, I guess you'd call them middle management, or the people who have power but have lost it under the current rulers and people who have been made officials and everything, they don't like Joseph, because he, this Hebrew is getting all this attention from Pharaoh. And they're not too happy about it. So this is planting those seeds for what's coming in Exodus. Give him, he gives him the Ramses land, so the best of the land of Goshen, the fertile land. And he even says, if any of your uh, brothers are men of activity, basically if they're like you, if they're shrewd and good and hardworking men, let me know and I'll put them in charge of my cattle because I'm sure that they'll do well and the Lord will bless them and they'll multiply my uh, holdings and then Jacob is presented before Pharaoh and Jacob blesses Pharaoh you know he's uh, again so don't think of this as necessarily like Pharaoh accepts their God or anything like that we don't have any obviously it's more likely no and we don't have any evidence whatsoever that that is the case but he's still doing good by them and they you know it's like god bless you thank you so much you can ask god to bless a person even if they don't believe in god and that's exactly what jacob's doing i mean jesus says pray for thine enemies pharaoh's not even their enemy he's a good man it seems who just doesn't seem to believe in their god so of course jacob will still give him a blessing for being a good man 
And that's what happens here. And Pharaoh shows a lot of respect for Joseph and his family and his line. Again, I think of this more as like he... I think the, the way it's set up, the pharaohs really view themselves as God or as more elite than others. So it's more of like a mutual respect that they have for the gods, you know. So they have this uh, looking down upon anyone else in society. And Joseph proves himself so well and has a connection to this deity that the Egyptians did believe in the deity of the Hebrews. They just didn't think it was the one true God. And so he sees Joseph has this relationship. So he sees Joseph closer to his level than even the other Egyptians. Again, planting the seed for the people in Egypt to not be too happy with the Hebrews later on. And then whispers being put into Pharaoh's line down the road. Uh, now I'm not going to get too into it, but uh, what's his name? Uh, Amunatep or something? Amunatep? It starts with an A. I don't care. But there is a... Uh, Egyptian pharaoh who tried to change their religion to the religion of a one god but it was still like sun god worship because you know it had to do with worshiping the sun and everything but it was uh the first and ever tried monotheistic religion within uh Egyptian culture and a lot of people have said that this is could possibly be Moses you know Moses was a prince of Egypt and that uh, it was him who tried doing this, and the Egyptians forced him out because they didn't like the way that he was acting. And according to a lot of that that type of understanding, he wasn't really Hebrew. He was an Egyptian who just started to like the Hebrews. Uh, I don't think that's the case either. I also wonder, though, and I haven't looked, but the, t the timing does kind of work out. For my theory, and I've never really seen anyone say this, but I always wonder if that possibility isn't that it was Joseph's pharaoh who tried to convert everyone. That's just a huge theory. I tried finding information and matching up timelines and stuff, uh, but people, the Egyptian timelines of kings is kind of messed up, and they don't know for sure a lot of that stuff. So, totally out there theory, but I wonder, that's one that I'm curious about a little bit. Is who this pharaoh was who tried to go to a one one god monotheistic religion, and was kind of forced out. And no one mentions the guy, the pharaoh that Jacob uh, had. And I was, hmm, I was wondering that because jo or that Joseph had, because Joseph has a lot of influence. Like his wife is the daughter of a high priest of the the king or the god on, and yet she still either goes to Joseph's way of thinking or has enough respect for his way of thinking to not teach her religion to. The, his Joseph's sons, which is very odd that she wouldn't do that if she's the daughter of this high priest, and to allow his sons to be raised as Hebrews. So I just and Joseph clearly has tons of influence over this Pharaoh, and I've just always wondered if it wasn't this Pharaoh that kind of started coming over to that way of thinking a little bit, and that's kind of what caused him to not be well liked after his death. And it also would the, even more so plant these seeds of the Hebrews are bad. You know, we can't trust the Hebrews. We can't trust these people who came in, which we'll see in a few chapters here when we get to Exodus. That's just a theory. So don't take that as scriptures, but I just kind of always wondered about it. But all we are here is that they're getting the best of the land in Goshen, and Joseph's taking care of his family. And Pharaoh's totally okay with it and has the utmost respect for Joseph and his brothers and his family. And wants to give him the best of the land and even make the best of his brothers or the best of their households uh, to be put in charge of his own livestock. Moving on, verse 13. And there was no bread in the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought, and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. R recognize that. No, not to get off on a tangent, but the money hath faileth. Money is worthless, ladies and gentlemen. Money is nothing. They're in a famine. They can hardly get food. They're already using their money to buy the food. Now they ran out of money. There's nothing they can do now. But they 
and even if they have money, it's become worthless because all that anyone wants to buy is food. That's all that anyone cares to get. It failed. This is obvious. Assets, people. You want assets. You want livestock. You want food. You want things that are going to get you through. Where m The things that money will buy you, those are the things you want. You don't want a money itself. Eventually, that will fail. Just to a side note there. Of course, we, we're about to see how shrewd Joseph and his brothers can be. And Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. What when that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not <laughs> aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be thy servants unto <laughs> Pharaoh, and give us seed, that we may live and not die, that the land not be desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of, the, of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field because of the famine. So listen to this. <laughs> Again, don't ever put the Christ monarchy onto the patriarchs. Joseph is a good man. But he's incredibly shrewd, and he's nowhere near as charitable as Christ, or as Christ would have probably wanted people to be. Yes, it's all for God's providence, God's greater plan, but God would have still made his plan work even if Joseph wasn't so shrewd here. People will see this as a good thing, and if you want to look at it business-wise, it's a genius thing. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. You see what he's doing? First, he, he like, all right, you're out of money. I already got all your money for this grain that you grew and I took as like a tax to prepare for the famine, and now I'm making you pay for it. Oh, but that money's run out. The money you paid for the grain that you grew that I took. Well, now give me your cattle and your herds and your livestock and shit in exchange. And they did that for a year. And then that ran out. And the year's up. And they still need food because the famine's still going on. So uh, we will not hide our shame, our herds and the cattle. And but our bodies and our lands, wherefore shall we die before thine uh, blah, 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 and give us seed? So he bought the lands for Pharaoh. They gave away their land now. Again, for the grain they grew that was taken as a tax to prepare for this famine. Do you understand why the seeds are being sown for them not being very well liked by the Egyptians? Are you getting it? These foreigners coming in and taking over your government and taxing you for grain. Yes, it gets him through the famine, but he's still charging people. He's buying even the land of Egypt. Like, these are Egyptians. It's not like, uh, oh, we'll sell some of our grain to the greater people. No, the only ones they're doing that for are the Hebrews, the, K the Joseph's line. He's, he's doing this to the Egyptians themselves. Uh, so Joseph bought a land for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became jo Pharaoh's, and as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders <laughs> of Egypt even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh and did eat their portion, which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore, they sold not their lands. See, again, this is why, again, Pharaoh didn't convert. He still regards the Pharaoh, the Egyptian priest class. And Pharaoh's immediate officials all still really like Joseph, too, because they're making money off of this. They're like, this guy's best. He prepared us for this famine. He's making us all this money. Uh, you know, Pharaoh's not going to take our lands. This is the priest class. So they're loving this. They're just eating it up. The Egyptian people are hating it. They're basically selling... Now, they don't have any land. The land that they grew this grain on to prepare for the famine, they don't own it anymore. They don't have any livestock. All gone for food. They don't have any money. All gone for food. And it's all going to Pharaoh through Joseph, through Joseph's decision-making. Very shrewd decision-making, but not very popular among the people, obviously. 
Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here. Oh, and he's moving them from the city. Like he's relocating all the people too because he just bought their land. So again, hmm, I wonder why Egyptians on the whole just really didn't like the Hebrews. <laughs> again, I'm not talking smack about anyone. But if you are a Christian, you can totally see that this is not okay. You know, this isn't necessarily, yeah, it all falls into God's plan because God needed them to go to Egypt to then go through the Exodus. It's all part of God's plan. But Joseph isn't like a man that's perfect. He believed in God and he always was true and, and honest and righteous and just and loved God and loved his family and forgiving. But at the same time, he wasn't extremely charitable. I mean, everyone has their flaws, and he just saw this as the wise decision making. That doesn't make him a bad person at all. I mean, there's plenty of people like this that I think get a bad rap for being a bad person because they're such shrewd business people, but they're not a bad person. That's just what they are doing, and now that might be one of their flaws. You know, they're they're lacking in virtue of charitable nature or whatnot, or of a uh, understanding the strife of the common man but that doesn't make him a bad person just like joseph but that doesn't mean that their lack of charity and their shrewdness is always a good thing either all right behold i have bought you this land and for pharaoh lo here is seed for you and ye shall sow the land so now they're basically slaves so he bought the land from them, and then he's giving them seed and making them plant it, which they'd already done when he collected all the grain. And it can, and it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. And they said, Thou have saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt unto this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests, only which became not Pharaoh's. Okay. So they're like these people that he relocates. You understand what he did there? It was like, uh, what do you call it? redistribution of wealth is what he just did so he brought and again this is what i'm saying it's not all bad it's not all good he brought in people from all over to relocate them on these lands that he just bought from the like what do you want to call it? like all the lords let's look at it the like old english style the king through this famine took advantage of it and bought the lands from all the lords okay so now the lords who had their serfs and their peasants underneath of them and their bannermen and all that the every lord and uh, any type of bannerman that had his own fast and land now is owned by the king it's owned by pharaoh through joseph's true decision making then joseph redistributes the people removes them from the cities and has them work the land so now, like, the peasants kind of own their own land. Like, they don't own it. Pharaoh owns it. So that's one thing. It's not their own land. So don't get too excited. That would be great if that's what he did. But he gives them, he teaches them to work the land, tells them this is what you'll do. And a fifth of it will go to Pharaoh every year because this will prepare for future famines. And the fourth of it, uh, the four-fifths that's left is yours to have as a community. So it's kind of a good thing. You know, these people who had been being taken advantage of in this caste system forever. Now they're like, thank God, praise you, we'll serve Pharaoh because this is such... So again, it gets... Think about what's going on. The high, high, high class love Joseph because he's making them tons and tons and tons of money. The really way poor, 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 uh, they are loving it because now they're kind of in charge of their own lives. Not that there was a middle class really... But it's the official, so basically there's like these people and then the high class. But 
the people who just missed out on becoming Pharaoh's officials, you know, the cousins and the second brothers and the people who owned land but weren't influential in the government in any way, stuff like that, they were the ones who lost out big. They're the ones who really is the, having the seed sowed for hating the Hebrew line. And again, officials change by Pharaoh and by Pharaoh's whims and whatnot. So eventually, you know, one of these, think of a Game of Thrones style. You know, the hand of the king changes all the time. Eventually, the council members, the officials that advise Pharaoh on a day-to-day -day basis are going to change. And they might be pulled from one of these other families who just lost everything. And then they're going to be whispering in the ear of the next Pharaoh. And they're not none too pleased with these decisions that Joseph made. Even though it made, that got them through the famine, it made the country wealthy, or the Pharaoh wealthy, <laughs> And it consolidated power for the pharaoh, and it gave power to a little bit more power to the peasant class. But see, most Egypt these Egyptians don't like that. They don't like giving some power to the lower class. It's sowing the seed is what he did. So he was working in all things towards God's grace, God's love, working towards good. But at the same time, there are people who don't want that because it takes power away from them, and that's what Joseph's doing here. You know. Again, it's just funny to me how willing these lower, these people were who kept coming to just give away everything, everything they had, everything they had. The next thing you know, their total redistribution of wealth. And this is it's funny to because it's such a thing that continues to go on. You see it all the time. Like this is stuff that's being talked about in America right now about redistribution of wealth, and the more and more rights you give up the more and more they can do this. The problem is not everybody is Joseph. <laughs> and obviously, as we see, after Joseph dies, things really go downhill because there's no more people like Joseph in government. <laughs> Most of the time, it's not a very good decision to give up all of your everything. But then again, it was to eat food, I guess. But understand what just happened here. There was a total redistribution of wealth, and the caste system had been shaken. Now, Pharaoh consolidated his power in all these great ways, but a lot of the lords, whatever a counterpart to a lord was in ancient Egypt, they are pissed. They just lost their land, their wealth, all their livestock, They and now their land is being farmed by these peasants. All right, verse 27. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt... In the country of Goshen, and they had possession therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, so the whole age of Jacob was an hundred and forty-seven years. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. Ooh, what a rhyme. And he called his son Joseph, and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt, but I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me, and he swear unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. All right, so it's just a sentimental scene where, you know, for the next 17 years, uh, Joseph's taking care of the land. He's governor, taking care of his family, and they're living pretty prosperously in the land of Goshen. And Jacob, just basically, you know, when he's growing close to his deathbed, he has his son come there and placing the hand of the thigh. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you see people put their foreheads together and talk, or you like hug, or, you know, different cultures have different ways of like, you know, doing this sort of like the handshake of today. And that's what he's doing. He makes him a promise. Bury me in the land of my fathers in the land of Canaan. Because he still, Jacob still knows that they're going to be brought up out of the land of Egypt to go back to the chosen land. This is what God told him before he went into Egypt. So he wants to make sure that he's buried there. And it's also kind of a way of reminding his descendants, you know, that our land is the land of Canaan. This is not our land. You know, we're here for a time. But remember, this is not the promised land. So that's the end of 47. Uh, the main thing to get out of it is uh, Joseph's redistribution of wealth and how easily 
he did it? <laughs> like, I just can't believe how quickly everyone gave up all their livestock and everything to be fed from the grain they grew. You know, for like the conservative side of me looks at this and sees big government, uh, but the sentimental and righteous side of me also sees how Joseph used this in a good way. But at the same time, it's kind of like, what's that Harry Potter saying, you know, for the greater good, the Grindelwald saying. I don't really believe in that for the greater good in a lot of cases. You know, you can't do bad to do good. Only God can take your bad things and make them good. But you should still always strive to do good. You understand? This is something that I've struggled with trying to explain to people, but to me it makes total sense. No matter what happens, good or bad, God will make it good. That being said, and everything happens in God's plan. That being said, doesn't mean that you shouldn't have done good, that you shouldn't have tried to do good in every situation. Joseph's redistribution of wealth, I have trouble with it. I like I think, obviously, it was very smart and wise all along the way, and I see why it was part of God's plan, but at the same time, you're going to see that, and this is always the case, just like part of God's plan for Jacob to have 12 sons, and he had four wives to and have the 12 sons, but that doesn't mean the polygamy was okay with God. You know, God would have made it okay, makes it okay no matter what, but that doesn't mean that was the right thing. And again here, Joseph seeds these, sows these seeds for them being hated in the land of Egypt because of how he redistributes this wealth and the people who lose their wealth get so pissed off about it. And again, yes, it was a good thing in the end because God made it a good thing, but was it good while he was doing it? And there's always repercussions, ripple effects. You know, down the line with Jacob and his polygamy, even though it was part of God's plan, his brother's have this intense rivalry and it goes down through the ages but among the tribes all because of the different mothers they had same here you know down generations later the Egyptians are ticked off at the Hebrews because of the power and influence they start to have and how they took a lot of the wealth away from their forefathers so again it sows the seed for hatred I've always said that you know when people ask why do bad things happen to good people because sin has a ripple effect you know no one's perfect sin always has a ripple effect even if it's down the road something's gonna come back to bite you because you, it you didn't do it exactly God's way and again just because I'm going I'm not going against what the Bible says obviously I understand that this is what the Bible says but not everything that the Bible says is it saying is it condoning that action that's super clear and if you don't agree with that then you don't agree with the Bible you know there's tons in the Bible where they're just showing you what happened and they're not saying it's good or bad they're saying this is what happened and here's the results of it and it's up to us as critical thinkers to be able to see and understand that all right everyone have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or good night God bless